To all the different kinds of bugs that live here, the forest is a giant buffet. This giant grasshopper is a herbivore. It has the basic insect toolkit, three sets of mouth parts. It uses sideways slicing jagged mandibles like scissors to cut up leaves. The other two sets carry jointed palps that taste the food before the grasshopper bites into it. This multi-blade Swiss Army knife of tools evolved from primitive legs and, with a few minor modifications, can be used to tackle many different items on the insect menu. This African ground beetle is a carnivore. It hunts on the forest floor, but it won't be a high-speed chase. It hunts slugs. These defenseless mollusks seem to just wait to get captured. The beetle's mandibles have pointed tips, more like curved daggers than scissors. Perfect for piercing the gelatinous slug and dragging it off. The mandibles also serve as steak knives. Below the pointed tips, sharp blades chop up slug meat into bite-sized pieces. Covered in slime, there's no elegant way to eat a slug. But the little African ground beetle is no slob. Keeping its mouth parts and legs clean is vital to its survival. So, after it finishes a meal, it finds a napkin to wipe itself clean. This bit of leaf will do nicely. Grasshoppers and beetles use the insect equivalent of knives and forks to cut and then chew their food. This stealthy assassin bug prefers to stab and suck. All three sets of mouth parts are molded into a long, sharp beak, or rostrum, strong enough to puncture the armor of its prey. In this case, a wandering cockroach. The beak is hollow. When it pierces the roach's tough exoskeleton, it injects a deadly, fast-acting poison, which dissolves the prey from the inside. Then, with straw already inserted, the assassin bug slurps up the gourmet cockroach soup. This South African rock scorpion isn't an insect, it's an arachnid. So it starts with a different basic toolkit. One set of primitive legs has been transformed into giant claws called pedipalps, evolved to grab and hold prey using brute strength. Though it's a bit of overkill on a little woodlouse. Scorpions don't have mandibles. Instead, another much smaller pair of claws, the chelicerae, reinforced with heavy metals for toughness, tear and shred its meal, before passing morsels into its mouth, hidden from view. All arthropod mouth parts started out as primitive legs, but evolution has transformed those basic jointed limbs into different structures, from claws to straws. It's just one of the reasons for their incredible success. Among arthropods, breeding can sometimes be slow and sultry, other times fierce, frantic and dangerous. The millipede seduction begins with a massage. With hundreds of legs, it's a full-bodied affair.
These millipedes have six inch long bodies, but their sex organs are right at the front end, just seven segments behind the head. All this caressing is to persuade the female to turn and face him. When she does, he passes a packet of sperm over to her. Millipede mating is a sedate, leisurely affair, often lasting several hours. For a male scarab beetle, it's a crowded scrum. This male on the right has found a female and clambers on her back. But he has a rival who uses his shovel-shaped head to try and pry him off her. But they're so busy fighting, the female's had enough and wanders off. A male scorpion has more to fear from a female than rejection. He grabs her and probes with his sting, confirming she's a female. But this potential mate could easily kill him, so he must grapple with her powerful claws to hold her at arm's length and keep his distance from her lethal stinger. Claws locked together, he leads her in a pirouette across the sand. This courtship dance signals his intentions and allows the male to search for a patch of solid ground on which to drop his packet of sperm. Here will do nicely. Hidden beneath his body, the sperm packet is smaller than a grain of rice. Having deposited it, he pulls the female around so she's directly over it. And she picks it up through a tiny opening at the base of her legs. Job done. A female mantis lacks the scorpion stinger, but she too is a deadly predator. And she's just as happy to eat her partner. This male must approach her very carefully so he doesn't become her next meal. Her abrupt warning display signals she's not in the right mood. If he doesn't back off, she'll kill him. Time to look elsewhere. This female might be a bit more amenable. As he inches closer, he releases a chemical signal to announce that he's a mate, not lunch. But the final approach is still a leap of faith. Lucky for him, she seems receptive. She holds still while he gets down to business. This female Honduran curly haired tarantula with a leg span of nearly six inches is just as deadly. She spins a mat of silk, trip wires that detect any prey that ventures close to her lair. And she could easily kill this smaller male. But it's a risk he must take if he wants to sire the next generation. After nightfall, male tarantulas wander long distances in search of these femmes fatales. Receptors in his legs tell him he's stumbled on the female's silken mat. And he quickly taps out a code on the silk to tell her he's come courting. But this is no romantic encounter. 
He must use his front legs to hold her half-inch deadly fangs at bay. While holding her aloft, he uses one of his palps to insert a sperm package into the female. Then he beats a hasty retreat, just in case she changes her mind. For many male arthropods, the mating game is a dangerous one. Yet the stakes couldn't be higher. <laughs> 